Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from DanceTube.tv and today I've got my Before You Buy the Mavic Air 2. This is a series I have on the channel where I really tear down a new product and let you guys know what you need to actually know before picking up a new product. And in today's episode we have the Mavic Air 2. I will be comparing this drone to the Mavic 2 Pro just because it's another hot competitor in the market right now. I'll just be discussing the differences but all the footage will be coming from the Mavic Air 2. So if you're new to the channel then you can expect brutally honest tech reviews right here on dancetube.tv so make sure to subscribe and smash that notification bell. I want to give a massive shout out to my film crew that helped me out with this particular episode here. I will have links in the description below to check out their stuff. But massive thank you to Eloise, Gia, Eamon and Ben. And I've also done a lot of content on the Mavic 2 Pro. So I'll have some links in the description below to check those out. Just so you can see what the Mavic 2 Pro has to offer as well. Now when it comes to the design of the Mavic Air 2. I was actually really disappointed that they didn't continue that unique design that we saw in the Mavic Air. They've gone for a more stream streamlined Mavic range where the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic Air 2 actually look pretty much the same besides the fact that the Mavic 2 Pro is a little bigger and has a few more sensors but overall they look very similar and I was kind of disappointed that they didn't keep with that unique Mavic Air design. The Mavic Air 2 can shoot 4K 60 frames per second so on paper it's better than the Mavic 2 Pro but that's not actually the case and I think this is a bit of a common misconception amongst consumers out there who want to buy a new drone. So the Mavic 2 Pro actually has a 5K sensor that's downscaled where the Mavic 2 Pro I mean the Mavic Air 2 <laughs> is a 4K Sony sensor that can shoot 4K 60. So even though the Mavic 2 Pro can't shoot 4K 60, it is a 5K sensor plus it's a one inch sensor where the Mavic Air 2 is a half inch sensor. The Mavic Air 2 also weighs in with an additional three beautiful minutes of flight time over the Mavic 2 Pro. So you actually get 34 minutes with the Mavic Air. The Mavic Air also has a range of 10 kilometers where the Mavic 2 Pro has a range of eight kilometers. Overall, both the Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic 2 Pro offer a phenomenal flight experience and they're extremely reliable. I haven't had issues with either of these drones. So honestly, they both offer an amazing flight experience with a lot of different opportunities inbuilt in the application to really make the most out of the drone. One thing to be mindful of is that the Mavic Air 2 uses DJI's new app, DJI Fly, where the Mavic 2 Pro uses the DJI Go 4 app very confusing and please streamline it guys. Today's episode has been proudly sponsored by TechScore. They aim to be everyone's one-stop destination for finding the best tech deals right as they occur online. And they have a really wide range of partners that you can actually shop through. So they have Gearbest, Walmart, Amazon, Microsoft and AliExpress just to name a few and basically if you purchase through the tech score site then you actually have cashback rewards which can be redeemed for daily prizes so it's a really awesome way to buy your tech because you're then getting rewarded for buying the tech that you already would be buying and you're going through trusted merchants so it's a really secure fun way to buy your tech. And if you actually sign up now with my link in the description below, then you can specify that you were referred by dancetube.tv. So then everyone wins and we can all make some money back together as we're buying our regular tech purchases for the year. Now when it comes down to the camera on the Mavic Air 2, it is a half inch Sony sensor, but I've been very impressed so far with what it can shoot. It's got really lovely dynamic range and color science and there are so many options inbuilt in the actual application as well. So I've been impressed with what you can do so far. There are a few little limitations that have annoyed me so far. So firstly, when it comes to the A-Pass 3.0 or the Focus Track, it's actually not available in any of the slow-mo options. And it's also not available in the higher frame rates for the 4K settings or the 2.7K settings. So I found this to be quite a limiting aspect. So that's something to be mindful of. If you really wanted it for that, you can't do that. It might come out in a future update, but it's a little bit annoying. But I have been really impressed 
impressed with the 4K footage and the 1080p footage, as well as the hyperlapse mode, which I haven't really had too much of a chance to play around with yet, and all of the intelligent flight modes and the fun quick shot modes as well. I've played around with as much as I can so far, and they all work really well, and it's kind of what we have come to expect now from DJI. It's just a flawless experience when you load the drone up and take it up in the air. It just works really well, so I've been impressed with that. But if I'm to compare it to the Mavic 2 Pro, then I definitely do notice that that has the edge when it comes to the video quality, the photo quality, and the overall experience with the app. I have had a few issues with the gimbal cover, and this just seems to be one of those things that you get used to when you buy DJI drones quite regularly. But they change the gimbal cover every time, and they're obviously doing it to try to hold the camera securely. And don't get me wrong, this definitely holds the camera nice and securely, but it actually pushes the camera so far forward into the gimbal cover and it just feels unnatural. It just feels like you're handling such a delicate thing in such a... Uh, I don't even know how to describe it, it's just not nice, it just makes me cringe when I do it. Moving on to the controller, this is something that I was repulsed by when I originally saw it, and I thought it looked really cheap, flimsy, and it looked like the complete opposite direction from other DJI products. And it's funny how you think that when you initially see something, and then you get it in your hands, and it's actually amazing. They've done a really good job with it. It fits nicely and snugly in your little bag, and then when you unfold it, everything's just tucked away. The cable's hidden away, you lift up the little clamp, and that just holds your phone nicely. You can actually have your case on and still use the clamp. The cable also tucks just behind, so really nicely done. And then the integrated antennas just mean that you don't have to deal with antennas. They're just tucked away. So overall the controller feels really nice, the buttons, the sticks, everything just feels super tight. So I've been actually extremely happy with the controller and over time I've really enjoyed setting up my phone in this controller. There's no pain points, I don't have to take it out of the case try to cram it into a spot, it's just really, really easy. Besides these tiny little pain points that you will always find with the product, nothing's going to be perfect, but I do find the Mavic Air 2 to be a very solid drone for anyone that wants to buy a drone. Now, it's not a cheap drone, so it's probably not the smartest first drone to pick up, but if you're considering getting the Mavic 2 Pro, you want to have an upgrade, but you maybe don't want to spend that much. The Mavic Air 2 is that nice midpoint. So we've now got the Mavic Mini, which is the cheaper drone, the Mavic Air 2, which is in the middle, and then the Mavic 2 Pro. So there's a really nice range of Mavic drones now, and I think the Mavic Air 2 perfectly slots into that middle point. It's still a really powerful drone and it has a lot to offer, but the Mavic 2 Pro is definitely a better choice if you have the money. Um, but the Mavic Air 2 is probably the better choice for most people out there. It's the most logical upgrade for a lot of people. And if you do have the money and you want to get a drone that's going to be reliable with a few sensors, that can shoot 4K60, that can do really nice slow-mo, that can track you, do all of those things, you're going to want to get the Mavic Air 2 over the Mavic Mini, for example. Um, but you might not want to go all the way up to the Mavic 2 Pro. So honestly, it's actually a really cool drone and something that I'm very excited to test out more over the coming weeks. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, smash that notification bell to be notified on future Mavic Air 2 content, and I'll chat to you guys in the next one. Peace out.